I had walked a border-to-border -border trail before. It made me realize most of our limits are self-imposed. Nevertheless, I viewed the Continental Divide Trail as an incredible challenge. Yet whether or not we were able to surmount the problems of terrain, weather, and circumstance, I was irretrievably drawn to the spirit of the attempt. And like Lynn, I have no restraint. The sport of long distance hiking was totally new to me. Just before meeting Jeannie, I had been married for seven years and then divorced. It had been a real predictable existence. I had returned to college, graduated, and worked for a year with my photography. At the end of that year, I was open to an adventure. Quite unexpectedly, Jeannie invited me to walk from Mexico to Canada on the Continental Divide Trail. I found her highly compatible and competent in the outdoors. A quest for the unknown, the unpredictable, was the spirit of our adventure. The type of adventure I had thrown myself into was different from anything else I had ever done. I had not known conviction to one long-term goal. High adventure with genuine risks and no foreseeable outcome was indeed a real gamble. I didn't know if I'd be able to complete the journey we'd begun. The day before we began walking, I asked Jeannie what her biggest fear was. She said, our feet, Lynn, our feet are going to hurt a lot. She was right. I keep wanting women to go for it, to test themselves in new and different ways, and to challenge the old ideas that women are not strong and self-reliant. As we drew nearer the completion of New Mexico, Colorado's snowbound Rockies slowly rose to dominate the skyline. The success or failure of our venture depended upon how well we would be able to survive in that snow. April 29th, at 12,000 feet elevation, our path turned from blacktop to a trackless expanse. Lynn and I claim no extraordinary measure of strength or courage, but we have the ability to recognize danger and risk and felt that we had no choice but to test our judgment. Thank you. 
From the first day, the weather was poor, bearing high winds and severe cold. As it came to pass, two heavy storms doubled the existing snowpack. We were caught in six feet of new snow, and extreme avalanche danger sealed off the high Rockies. We escaped alive, but Jeannie's feet were severely frost-nipped. Fears of Jeannie not being able to continue disintegrated our trust and created the first discord in our friendship. After 11 long days of convalescence, she was ready to go again. The only non-mountainous portion remaining was the Great Divide Basin in Wyoming. So we drove north to the southern Wyoming border and began walking across the Red Desert. Ironically, the day we returned to the Divide, a fierce spring blizzard paralyzed all of Wyoming and suddenly the pain in Jeannie's feet was secondary to our survival. Three days later, the storm subsided and we crossed the basin. The desolation of the Great Basin nurtured a pleasing solitude and road repartee between us dwindled to comments about the weather, the water, and when to stop. We luxuriated in May heat and cool evenings when coyote calls and sweet smells of sage lingered on the wind. In 10 brief days, we faced snow-covered slopes again. The wind rivers had not been traversed this spring, yet a mountain guide predicted by traveling at night when the snow was hard enough to walk on, it was possible to make the trip in 20 days. We entered the wilderness wearing snowshoes and carrying 70-pound packs with 11 days of food. Actually, Lynn and I doubted our ability to succeed at such an imposing task. Nevertheless, we were prepared to throw all of our resources into the attempt. Our partnership welded into a synergistic bond, carrying us through 16-hour days that began at midnight. We weathered two storms before arriving at the northern reaches of the Wind Rivers. It was the most rigorous terrain we hiked on the Divide. We exited totally infused with the joy of success. Our traverse had taken 12 days. The foothill topography that brought us into Yellowstone was a veritable sluice from the melting snows of the high country. It was here we had our closest brush with death. When the water was especially deep and swift, we crossed confidently supporting each other, gripping shoulders. On one river crossing I hope someday to forget, our method didn't work. Mid-river, with the current already up past her crotch, Jeannie stepped into a hole and lost her footing. An explosion of adrenaline clamped our grips and I held her up. Surviving this incident, we proceeded to walk into an area that had been evacuated due to a grizzly mauling. An armed ranger met us on the trail and escorted us out of the park the next day. We returned to complete Colorado as the snow was making its exit from the high country. We scored a bonanza of vitality when the textures of the wilderness turned sublime and inviting. Then, for the first time in four and a half months, we began seeing other hikers. We were no longer bound to the immediacies of route finding and could think outside of present tenses. We had time to look closer at the glories of intricacy, 
time to blow the harmonica softly and relish peace between muscles and gravity. Walking 15 miles each day and living in the wilderness for six and a half months left me feeling like I'd been scoured from the inside out. We completed Colorado in August and drove north to Montana. Powdery remnants of a three-foot August snow clung to the high peaks, and meteorologists predicted an early and severe winter. The season that would close the mountains to us was coming hard and fast. Unremitting sameness of western Montana forests stressed my emotional endurance. Somehow the journey had lost its pizzazz, and I felt my commitment had been drawn out too long. Mid-September the sun returned and rode its course across a pale blue cloudless sky. Fall now transformed the forest into softened golds and salmon pinks. Montana was blessed with an Indian summer. My commitment was reborn. My spirit continually finds solace and strength in this trekking space and its inexhaustible beauty. I didn't wish once I was doing anything else. 